Now, for Juan Lozano, better known to us as Verse, Juan, aka Verse, is a senior majoring in public relations, and his TED Talk is on the real science behind happiness. It's got a great title, Making Feel Good Science into Real Good Science. Verse. Hey, everybody. We spend a lot of time thinking about how to not be unhappy. But is that what happiness really is? Think about it. So if you're taking notes, uh, you may want to jot, jot this next one down. It's a, it's a little nice little tidbit. Modern psychology has crafted a better definition for happiness. It can be summarized in two words, subjective well-being. And subjective well-being doesn't even feel like happiness, really, which I know is a warm, fuzzy word. It feels more like flourishing or thriving. I'm the author of Poetry from the Future, the first art book to curate theories from this new science called positive psychology. Um, I find it titillating that we live in a time where Cognitive neuroscience has asked Buddhist monks from Bhutan, Nepal, to come to our labs, our research facilities, and get their brain scanned so we can look inside for the first time and find out some real science about happiness. Of all, scientists are starting to agree with these Zen masters and philosophers from many different fields of thought that have been saying for a long, long time that you do have some control over your own happiness. In fact, a lot of control over your own happiness. A surprising amount. When it comes to life satisfaction, my friends, people lie. Science and brain scans do not. So with this, the rest of this talk will focus on three, pra two practical applications of positive psychology that have been shown empirically to improve your subjective well-being and the quality of your relationships. Uh, they, uh, so, so they call them interventions in psychology. Practical applications are called interventions. I don't love that term at all. Interventions makes me uncomfortable. It sounds like I did something wrong. It sounds like I'm being trapped. That's not the point of positive psychology at all, right? Uh, the, po the point of positive psychology is to unlock a door in your mind into strengths that are already there, that have always existed. You just didn't know it, I guess, cognitively. Strengths like hope, wisdom, perseverance, courage, all these, thi all these things are being studied for the first time by science, as opposed to philosophy and et cetera and so forth. So, um, without further ado, I introduce you to the keychains, as I call them. This is the gratitude keychain, and it's a practical intervention that what I call keychains are practical interventions by positive psychology uh, that will increase your subjective well-being. So this is the gratitude intervention. What you do is you write one page, double space, Times New Roman, whatever you want, uh, thanking somebody in your life who you wouldn't have thanked otherwise, then you read it out loud to them. That's it. That's it. It's been shown by science to improve your subjective well-being and that of the recipient of the keychain for an average of six months. Uh, it's key that you don't do this with your mom or dad. Hopefully you've thanked them once or twice. You want to do this with your cousin who likes all your Instagram pics. With that one homie in the squad who kept everybody together when shit hit the fan. Shout out to you. <laughs> um, gratitude interventions have been shown to improve things that would have been warm and fuzzy at one point and no longer are. The second one uh, I'd like to propose is the response keychain. This is the response keychain. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be Borat. There's four ways that you can respond when your partner tells you that they got a promotion or anybody comes to you with good news. You can be passive, you can be active, you can be constructive, you can be destructive. And, and you want to be 
actively constructed. And let me explain why. So these two are obviously bad. You don't want to be destructive, duh. Being passively destructive means, uh, you know, honey, I got a promotion at work. Oh my God, I'm gonna be getting paid more. Oh, uh, can I have a beer? Yeah, you don't want that. that you don't want to steal the conversation away. You don't want to say, well, you're never going to be the boss anyway, so why does it matter? That's actively destructive. And then the two on the top are tricky because they, this, the one on the right leads to no change in subjective well-being or quality of the relationship. It's basically just, I always believed in you, honey. And that's what most of us do, right? We, we'll, we'll say, you know, wow, that's great. You go, babe. But there's no change. See, uh, you don't have to be jolly and happy-go-lucky to be like Borat. What you want to do is you want to transport the person to the event that made them happy in the first place. That will increase the quality of the relationship. I'm not sure for how long, but I do know it leads to better sex life. It'll lead to feedback loops that'll tie into all kinds, uh, into every aspect of your relationship. And that's the science that we're looking at now. Uh, so I want to leave you guys with uh, an activity. And I'm, gonna, I'm very serious about this. I'm not going to talk until you guys do it. I want you to take your phones out right now. I'll be. Take my phone too. I want, to take, I want you guys to take your phones out and I want you to open up your memo section and I want you to write soul pancake gratitude video one day you'll forget everything but that little memo that can't be forgotten because it's on your phone now and you'll be scrolling through your memos looking for stuff to delete looking to clear up your storage and uh, you'll stumble upon it and maybe you look up the video and maybe it'll change your life and maybe someday you'll thank me <laughs>